Silver can easily reach $100 per ounce. Are we barreling towards another financial crisis? And are there some little known facts about silver? Are you going to learn something today during this video live stream? We're going to cover it all. We're going to get started right now, but it was a great week for gold. Before I came on, Jake from Jake's Custom Parts, that he sent me a text and that was the whole thing. Great week for gold. We know where gold goes, silver will follow. And guys, we are going to see this $50 silver, $100 silver. I think sooner as opposed to later, but we need to talk about why. Let's pull up a couple charts quickly here, okay? Everybody's talking about it now. We talked about this months ago, right? The cup and handle in silver. We've got Tabi Costa. I'm hearing all the top analysts talk about this massive. This is so important for you to understand. This is the most powerful, the most predictable chart pattern in the world. This gets us to $100 silver. Again, I'll mention, I heard Tabi Costa talking about this last week. This is how it happens, coupled with all the fundamental reasons, right? The fact that there's hardly any silver being mined right now. The fact that the demand for silver is exploding. But what this what this uh, chart shows you is from 1980 to 2011. That's the cup, guys. I don't know if you can see my orange cursor on the screen. I don't think you can. But do you see 1980, we hit $50 per ounce in silver. 2011, we hit $50 per ounce in silver. That caused a big sag. That's the cup. From 2011 to where we are now, that's the handle. This is the most predictable the most reliable, the strongest chart pattern in the history of the world. But there's a bonus factor that you need to also understand. And that is that the longer the time frame is that the cup and handle forms over, and in this case, it started in 1980. We're in what, 2024? Uh, 44 years. That's a real big cup and handle, guys. <laughs> That's like... Like those things you see at amusement parks or uh, roadside attractions on Route 66, like the coffee shop with the giant cup, right? I actually, I have a giant coffee cup here in the basement. I'll have to pull it out for you guys. I need to get the cup out. Wow. I have a giant cup, coffee cup that I used to have mounted on the top of my car. It's a long story. Anyway, I will get the, the giant coffee cup out. It was uh, made out of a steel barrel. Long story. The, what we're talking about here is the silver price. And this, guys, is good news for us. I'm telling you, things have changed. Gold, all-time high. Take a step back. Let's go back four months ago. And I told you, we would see. I predicted $2,600 gold by May. I'll still stand by my prediction. I don't uh, feel it's a, it's a short time window. However, however, I still think this year we could get $2,600 gold. I'll eat crow if I'm wrong. Gold breaking out the new weekly highs, all-time highs, highs in all currencies. It's, it's an exciting time for us to be in precious metals. Now, look, I'm not telling you what to do. Right? I've been talking about silver, talking about gold for decades. I've been on YouTube talking to you for a long time. I get attacked by saying $100 silver right? Uh, what do they call that? Clickbait. No, I believe in $100 silver. I believe in $187 silver. I believe in two, three, four, and $500 silver. And I believe that people that have their money in the metals now are going to be glad they did five, 10 years from now. Heck, maybe even five months from now. If you, right, you need to make your own mind up. But if you think that, uh, hold on a second, I'm getting, I'm getting a text from the boss. Okay. If you think that there's a good possibility that silver could save you in the event of financial turmoil, and we're going to get into that next, and we're going to talk about crazy ideas, crazy new things about silver that I'd never heard of. You want to get your hands on some silver now? <laughs> Do yourself a favor right there. Pimbex, P-I-M-B-E-X. They're an online bullion dealer. They make this live stream possible. But if you're thinking about buying silver, gold, or platinum, Go to their website, P-I-M-B-E-X, Pimbex.com. I think you'll find what I find. The best prices, okay, great selection, and great 
service. I can't say enough good things about the two brothers that own Pimbex. I've gotten to know them pretty well here over the last six months as we work together. And I feel so great and so grateful to have Pimbex as a sponsor because I know that when basement dwellers check out Pimbex for themselves, I'm not telling you what to do, but they find what I found, right? Great prices, great selection, great service. And if you're ever thinking about converting part or all of an IRA into precious metals, throw Pimbex into the mix there as well. Because you'll find, like you find when you buy uh, regular bullion, that they can provide for you, right, more metal for your money. Let's move on. We got a lot to talk about this morning. Thank you for everyone for being here. Almost 300 people. It's party time. It's party time. We had a great week. Okay, for gold, we had a good week for silver. Could there be more to come? We're going to get into that, okay? But let's talk about crisis. You guys remember one year ago, we had three of the four largest banks in the history of the United States, quite possibly the history of the world, right? Because what was the other one later on? Credit Suisse that went bankrupt, right? Like the, one of the oldest banks in the world. But nonetheless, one year ago right now, you couldn't get silver. You couldn't get gold because we had a banking crisis. Yes, remember that? And then over the weekend, Jeremy Powell and Janet Yellen had a little powwow and they put out a new program called the BTFD. Just remember, okay, okay, from an assets perspective, it was bigger than what happened to the banking sector during the financial crisis. That's a fact. This is a big deal. And right now we have renewed stress in the banking sector. Think about that, okay? All right, let me, NYCB, New York Community Bank. Let's touch on this briefly. Thank you, Ron McAdams, for that Super Chat. Super Chats are super appreciated. So are thumbs up, and you can subscribe today because it's free, okay? All right, let's just, let's just go quickly talk about what's going on. This could be financial crisis. Financial crisis means you wind up being very, very happy you own silver and gold, okay? All right? Very happy financial crisis. <laughs> One of the rescuing banks. This is about um, this is about NYCB. This is interesting. This bank in New York that's having problems. Okay, they were one of the rescuing banks from a year ago, and now they need a rescue. Okay, former Treasury Secretary, and this guy bugs me. I'm just going to be honest with you. Okay, Stephen Mnuchin, whatever a Mnuchin is. Ex-Goldman Sachs guy, of course. Yes, Goldman Sachs, where they listen to Ron's basement in the break room. I have that on good word. Is part of a group stepping up to save the day. So let's go into this a little deeper. And the bank term funding program ends Monday. Isn't this interesting? Remember, that was the bailout. That was money printing to help save all the banks. Oh, we know you lost a bunch of money on all your investments. We don't want you to have any pain. Mr. and Mrs. Banker, you need to be able to take your nippy naps in your office every day, Mr. Bank President, right? So we'll 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 bail you out. I know you made a bad investment. So we'll just we'll just make believe that that you can give us those bonds and we'll make believe that they're really worth what the par value is, right? And they're really the reality is they're only worth 60 cents on the dollar. I digress, but that all supposedly ends Monday. We'll see, okay? Here's what I wrote. Maybe I shouldn't read this, but I will anyway. <laughs> I can't see that Stephen Munchkin, Munchkin, whatever his name is, would be investing significant amounts of money, okay? Think about this. Let's put two and two together here, okay? Would Munchkin, the former Treasury Secretary, be investing all this money if he didn't know that something would be done if more banks start to fail. Do you think like, you know, Mnuchin has a little bit of an inside track, something's gonna happen, okay? Uh, this is all part of the spiral. You want doom and gloom? Let's pull up, let's talk about the spiral briefly. Briefly, let's see here. I think I got the right thing up. Uh, yeah, all right, let's, uh-oh, uh hold on, here we go. <laughs> Let's go to our favorite website, the U.S. Net Clock. Let's just make sure, basement dwellers, that things haven't changed. Oh, hey, I wonder I wonder when we're going to get the $34 trillion. See this over here? U.S. national debt. Wow. I think earlier in the week it was like uh, less. 
it looks like it's continuing to go up. How soon will we get to 34 trillion, 500 billion? This is all part of the spiral that's going on right now. We won't go down that path, but we are not happy with our politicians, right? Let's go over here. I was looking at this earlier, and then we're going to look at the secret window. Let's see what the secret window has today. But the paper to silver ratio, do you see that right there? Okay, let's click on this. You guys, in case you don't know this, I'm going to go down here to the paper silver ratio. See, when I put my cursor on it, it opens the window. Look at the very top of the screen. It will tell you the paper to silver ratio. Top middle of the screen says the number of paper silver ounces traded on the major world silver exchanges divided by the actual world production. That means we've got, oh, it's, it's, it, we're okay. It's not 400 yet. We have 393, okay, 393 paper ounces of silver being traded for each one ounce that's produced. Does that seem like that works? There's almost 400 people that think they have claims on each one ounce of silver that's being produced every year? Are you kidding me? Ugh. Hundred dollar silver. Come on, basement dwellers. Type something in the type something outrageous in the uh, in the uh, comments. What do you think silver is going to be? And thank you again for being here. Okay, let's open the secret window. What do you say? I don't really know what this means. Open. Oop. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay. U.S. Restoration. U.S. Debt Clock org. Debtor's prison. Oh, that's interesting. So they have the United States, the federal, they have a picture of the Federal Reserve, and in the basement is the uh, debtor's prison. All right, let me come back to you guys here. Let's move on. Things are getting interesting. Spiral time. Okay, we got Jerome. Okay, but everything's okay. Let's sit, let's just let's just take stock of what's going on. The stock market's at all-time highs, right? Everything's fine home residential real estate is going through the roof, right? My neighborhood here, I think I paid 220000 for this house. And my neighbors are like, you know, your house is worth a half million. I'm like, whatever, man, I don't want to sell it. You know, a house, you know what a house is? It's a pile of, my house is brick. It's a pile of bricks and some wood and a place I live in. It's not worth any money. Actually, when it goes up in value, my property taxes have like doubled over the years. But nonetheless, everything's great, right? Your house is probably doubled in value as well, maybe tripled. I live in the armpit of the country right now. Hey, um, you know, so we got the real estate market, residential real estate exploding, right? Oh, everything's great. We're all rich. Look at my 401k balance, right? No wonder the American consumer's racking up debt. They figure, well, I got all this money in my 401k if you're part of the you know, 30% of the U.S. population that actually has any money saved for retirement. My house, if you own a house, it just goes up and up in value. I paid this and my neighbors and Zillow says it's worth this, right? What else? Bond market's taking a hit, right? But Bitcoin taking off to the moon. Everything is great out there. But now what's the last thing? Join in the party, basement dwellers. Gold, right? And we're okay with that. We're okay with that because gold is the oldest and smartest. Do you find it interesting that gold is just now showing up? Do you find it even more interesting? Okay. Remember, right? I have a rubber band here. This is the gold to silver ratio. It is stretched to new historic high levels. Not the highest it's ever been, but on a historic basis, it's very high. When right? Gold at new all-time highs. When that, when all that energy that's in that elastic band, it's like an elastic, I can't, here we go. It's like an elastic rubber band. It's been stretched, right? You know, when you stretch a rubber band to its max and you let go, it's called a slingshot move in silver. Let's go check just real quick, real quick. I want to go and I want to check on this, the gold to silver ratio, okay? This is a chart. See my cursor? Here we are right now. Gold to silver ratio, ah, 90, 90.61. The rubber band is stretched. We can, this little spot right here, that was during the uh, C-19 crisis. We, we can erase that. That was like a one-off, you know, flash in the pan type thing. But if we go up here to 90, 
right? 90-ish and go across. How many times has the silver to gold ratio been at 90 over the last, oh, what is that, 30 years? How about it got close, right? It got close. I didn't really even get close. Here, where was it here? Silver to uh, gold to silver ratio. I don't know why they call that the gold to silver ratio. To me, it's the silver to gold ratio. How many ounces of silver? I apologize to you basement dwellers that may not know what we're looking at here. The silver to gold ratio measures the number of ounces of silver it takes to buy one ounce of gold. So you take the gold price, 21, 20, almost 2,200. I can't believe I'm saying that and divide it by the silver price. That'll tell you that right now it will take 90 ounces of silver, right? Four tubes of American Silver Eagles plus 10 additional coins to get one ounce of gold. And look at this. We've never really, right? Where do we get to there? 80? Uh, 80? What back here? 86? One time, right? This little, And that was a flash in the pan. I don't really count that. When it comes back, let's just say we get a silver to gold ratio of 70. Let's go down here to 70. Let's find when we were at 70. Oh, that's right here, right? That's more average. That's a $30 silver price, $32 silver price. So guys, we are set up for good times in the silver market when it comes flying back. Absolutely. In my opinion, right? Don't make any financial decisions. Don't adopt a puppy. Don't get engaged. Don't uh, do anything, buy a stock, silver, gold. I'm just giving you my opinion. You form your own opinions. Listen to me. Listen to other. There's a lot of great people out there, okay? I'm just giving you what I think. <laughs> but I do think we're going to get much, much higher silver and gold prices. Oh, boy, we got to move on. We got a lot to cover, okay? So uh, Jerome Powell testifying in Congress. Congress. We're talking about doom and gloom, financial crisis, and you're going to be happy that you own some silver and gold, okay? All right, Jerome Powell testifying in Congress this week made it very clear that he expects some banks to fail, quote unquote, some banks to fail, okay? Let's go to this, let's go to this. This is interesting, this will be quick, okay? Oh man, my favorite source for news, AOL.com. <laughs> Welcome to 1994, guys. Uh, anyway, back when the silver to gold ratio was 60, right? Yeah, anyway, AOL.com. Actually, this article is from Fortune. Somehow it's on AOL.com site. Top real estate CEO. Not any real estate CEO, but a top real estate CEO, okay? He warns that 500 or more, 500 or more banks will either fail or be consolidated over the next two years. Let's dig into this. This has to do with the CRE, the commercial real estate time bomb that is headed towards the U.S. economy and the U.S. banking sector. It will be good for silver and gold. It will result in printing of money. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll explain to you why in a second. Hold on. I'm going to have a quick sip of coffee. I'll explain to you here in a second, but let's just go through the first couple of paragraphs. Usually most of the meat of any articles in the first couple of paragraphs. And who wants to read a whole darn article ever since four regional banks holding a combined 532 billion in assets headlined by Silicon Valley Bank. Remember that was last year, guys, more from an assets pers perspective. One year ago right now, more banks failed than the entire or the worst year, maybe the entire uh, financial, great financial, the great financial crisis. Those banks, 532 billion failed in March of 2023. Regional banks have been under scrutiny from regulators. And given the CRE industry issues, a key focus has been on banks, excuse me, with the most exposure to the volatile sector. Okay, here we go. In an upcoming white paper seen exclusively by Fortune, RXR CEO Scotty Retchler described how regional banks will face a, quote, slow moving train wreck. Hold on a second. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. Hold on. I have a visual I want to share with you guys from my boyhood. Uh, I keep everything. I'm a pack rat. I'll be right back. Hold on, guys. I'll be right back. 
This is great. This is the banking sector. Let me see if my here it is. Don't leave me, baby. I got something for you. I got something. Hold on. Okay. Slow moving train wreck in the commercial real estate sector. I'm coming back. You're going to see me and I've got something to share with you. Okay. <laughs> My mom and dad spoiled me as a kid. I had the best parents in the world. Middle-class America. I grew up, but my mom and dad made all kinds of sacrifices for me, including whenever I got interested in things, they would buy me books. Okay. I got books on basketball, Indians, um, silver and gold, all kinds of crazy stuff. Anyway, when I was a little boy, I told my mommy, I said, mom, I think when I get older, maybe when I'm 54, we're going to have a commercial real estate problem. It's going to be like a train wreck. Here's the book, right? Okay. Train wrecks. I keep it on my, my, my uh, thing down here. Let me show you. Let me just show you what the, here, here's a great visual. Hope nobody got hurt. That was a long time ago. Right. Okay. Let me show you one more. Here. That's that's uh potential for our banking sector. <laughs> Have to put that down here and pull that out next time. Okay. Uh what are they gonna do? Right when all this happens. Hey Neil, thank you. Wow, thank you for that very generous super chat. Never expected, always appreciated. Thank you, thank you, Neil from Neil Hans Dynasty, the platinum guru. Now Guys, what they're going to do, okay, and now other people are saying this. I can't say I was the first, but I will say they're going to come out with a new program called the CRAP program, the Commercial Real Estate Assistance Program. Somebody tweeted, right? I don't know if they got it from me. I don't care, right? I think other people could have thought of that same thing. You know, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but they're going to they're gonna find some way to save. It's going to be money printing. It's going to be good for the crap program, right? <laughs> they had the BTFP. They had the QE. They had all that. But the bottom line, let's talk about the bottom line. And by the way, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Central Time, I'll be back on with Ted from Ted Speaks. We're going to focus in on silver uh, tomorrow and have some great information for you about what's going on. So again, 10 a.m. Central tomorrow morning but here's the bottom line and ted talks about this all the time we are in an epic battle between keynesian economics which is what we have here debt-based unicorn fart dust make-believe money whatever you want to call it okay keynesian economics money printing right you know the upside down extras pyramid all the fake synthetic money that's been made it's not money currency that's been made in Austrian economics. And this is critical for you to understand right now. I'd be curious if you agree with me on this or not, but I'm getting the feeling, and I even heard somebody on one of the more mainstream media shows say this, like uh, the Fed's kind of losing their magic touch. The Fed's kind of losing their believability. The market is starting to call monkey. Isn't that what it's called? Monkey on the Fed, okay? Um, <clears throat> I, I wrote this out. People are starting to be fed up with the Fed, okay? Not really believing them anymore. Um, uh, relying more on the laws of mathematics. People are starting to rely more on the laws of mathematics, basic mathematics, not convoluted, uh, acronym-driven rescue plans, but real mathematics. Mathematics show no forgiveness on the altar of truth. At the end of the day, everyone's realizing the real value of the dollar, unfortunately, is going down. Look, I'm a patriotic American. I love this country. I love reading about Andrew Jackson and Thomas Jefferson and Hamilton and all those guys, right? Right. I don't like it, but it's the reality. And we aren't going to sit around with our head in the sand. I'm telling you, man, 99% of the people out there in the United States have their head in the sand. I talk to a high power you wouldn't believe who I talked to last night, okay? And I didn't ask his permission, but I swear on anything, this is absolutely the truth. A famous high-powered attorney last night, okay, and his wife. And we were talking about everybody's asleep, okay? Everybody's asleep. All of our fellow Americans are dead asleep. You're willing to dig in. You're willing to understand. We were joking about the bricks. 
we said, yeah, we could go to like an Applebee's and survey 100 people at Applebee's, average Americans, middle, mid, whatever. Do you know what the bricks are? They'd be like, uh, no, I think this building's made out of bricks, but I don't know what a bricks nation is. They don't know what's going on. I'm sorry. I went off on a little bit of a, of a, of a thing, but it's key to understand that people, right? It's not, and it's, and it's, it's, it's starting to happen in the Western markets. It feels like to me, people calling the bluff of the Fed, people realizing the core of the issue here, right? Not all these little symptoms. People are like fed up with the Fed, like, oh, we're soft landing. Uh, Inflation's temporary. Inflation's transitory. Oh, we have the BTFP program. We have Q, we have reverse repo. We got it all. We got more smoke and mirrors than you know what to do with. And what's the real problem, right? The real problem is money printing. The real problem is a government. I'm not going to pull up the debt clock thing again. That's out of control. It doesn't work, baby. And you know who knows that? Silver. You tell me silver's not going to $100. I don't care. I bet Keith Newmar sit down here with me. He agrees. Man, I think it's going higher. $600. It can go. You don't even know how high it can go. Right? So I don't buy it, baby. I just don't buy it. Gold knows. Silver knows. Okay? Gold and silver know what's going on. And they know what's going on right now. They're sniffing it out. Right. They're the oldest and smartest markets in the world. They look not around the corner, right, out into the future. They're able to look around the corner. They're able to look out around two uh, corners. Okay. Everything's risky right now. Everything's risky. Right. If you have money in stocks, I have money in mining stocks. Right. Speaking of which, let me say thank you to channel sponsor Fortuna Silver, who put out their earnings this week. They are generating more cash. <clears throat> It's unbelievable. And what I really love, and I'm, I'm talking with Jorge Ganoza early next week, is the fact that how methodical and long-term oriented that company is. Okay, you can learn more about them at fortunasilver.com. There's a reason that they've grown and grown for almost 20 years now. You do your own due diligence, but it's a stock I do own. I'm not giving financial advice uh, in a company that I love. The other one that I love, of course, First Mining Gold. Founded by Keith Newmeyer, right? The king of silver himself, Keith Newmeyer. That's his gold company, currently run by CEO Dan Wilton. We have a new video I just dropped this morning, I think, talking about the gold market, right? We had another one a week ago where I talked about the company. But if you want to hear a CEO's perspective on the gold market, what's going on right now, go to the channel, find the most recent video. Dan's a great guy. Dan actually... Uh, sat down here in the basement. I can't see. Somebody in the comments tell me how many thumbs up we have because I'm supposed to ring cowbells for you new basement dwellers. With all this activity, guys, we have 670 people here. We got a lot of new people. Welcome to the new basement dwellers. Welcome to those of you who have been following for so long. You know we want to dig in. We want to learn, right? We put out new content every day, something about silver and gold. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Thank you for the super chats. Neil, you're being too generous with me, okay? <laughs> I appreciate it. You know that, right? Being super generous, I do see that. Uh, 350 thumbs up? No way. Well, hey, guys, right? We got to ring some bells. Hold on here. For those of you who are new, we ring bells. One more for Jake. All right, we got to dig back in. We got more down. Did you know, what do you think is going to happen if they shut the government down again? You know, I, this is not even big news anymore, but it can impact the markets. Everything's coming to a head here in the next couple of weeks. I didn't know this. Maybe you know this. And then we're going to talk about little known facts. You're going to learn, I learned something new about silver. Actually, I think two new things about silver. And I've been following silver for 20 years. So let's see if these are new things to you as well. But first, government shut down a larger, trickier deadline for the rest of the government, including the Defense Department, the State Department, and Homeland Security Departments. Looms just two weeks away, and negotiators are still far apart on spending amounts and policy provisions necessary to fund those agencies. So we may have another government shutdown, right? 
this is everything is, you know, the BTFP program ends Monday. The reverse repo, I'll be curious to hear the latest numbers on the reverse repo. Maybe tomorrow morning, Ted from Ted Speaks, our friend Ted, can bring us up to date on what's the latest, how much more money came out of the reverse repo program. We got a crazy presidential election, right, coming up. Uh, what else do we say? Government going to be shut down? I, we always, like us basement dwellers, we get a little chuckle out of the government being shut down because we never really notice when it happens. But nonetheless, that may happen. I'm going to put you on mute for a second. And you know what? I'm going to have a sip of coffee while I'm doing that. Let's let's let you just watch the, uh-oh, there it is, the debt clock. Oh, uh-oh, bear with me. There we go, basement dwellers. That's the debt clock. <laughs> That's While I'm having a sip of coffee, you can watch some of your hard-earned money fly out the window in real time. Oh, boy. How soon till we get to 34? Wasn't it just, wasn't it just 100 days ago that we were at $33.5 trillion in national debt? Okay, guys, I'm back. Let's talk about little-known facts about silver. Here we are. All right. This is this is very interesting. We've got a good friend of the channel, John Little. John is like a warrior for the silver market. Okay. Let's go to John's article. This is quick, but it is really full of crazy good information. Oh, shoot. Did I lose it? I think I lost it. Hold on here, guys. Just uh, watch me struggle on the screen as I... Oh. Am I doing it? Oh, okay. Here. Gmail. And well, you get to see a behind the scenes look at uh now live stream. All right. And here it is. Silver, Silver Academy. This is interesting. Hopefully, maybe make sure you're seeing what I think you're seeing. No, you're not. <laughs> Good thing I checked on that. Okay, now you can see it. Let me go here. This is from our friend John Little, the Silver Academy. If you're not subscribed to this, I recommend you do. He puts out at least one super interesting article every day. No, I don't get a commission on plugging him. No, he's just a, yes, he's just a friend of mine. And I think that John has great intentions and puts out some incredible information about silver. So go to the Silver Academy Substack and you can subscribe. But this is what's what's crazy. This guy from Sprott Money, who needs Sprott Money when you have Ron's basement can show you the 50-year silver chart. Perfect cup and handle. See? See? That's another analyst. All right. Unlocking silver's potential. A versatile and undervalued gem. Discover the industrial marvel. Silver's wide array of applications. Silver in industry, okay? Number one. This is not new to me. Exceptional thermal con conductivity. What that means, okay, and this says silver surpasses all other metals and efficiently transferring heat. This is crazy, and this is an experiment you can do, right, to prove this yourself. Silver transfers uh, temperature energy, thermal con conductivity, apparently better than any other metal. Uh, and that makes a big difference in a lot of industrial applications. But one way you can see this, get yourself a 10 ounce silver bar, take it outside on a warm day when it's like 90 degrees, okay? Put the silver bar in your picnic table in your backyard. And it doesn't even have to be in the sun. It can be in the shade because it will transfer the heat around it in the air, the 80, 85 degrees immediately to the ice cube. And the ice cube will instantly disappear. Well, it won't instantly disappear. But if you take two ice cubes out and you put the other one like in a bowl, and put one on top of that silver bar, you will be shocked at how fast that it that it melts, okay? Electrical conductivity, we've covered that ad nauseum. That's why it's so important for solar panels and electric cars and microchips and antennas and spacecraft wiring and circuit boards and you name it. Here's two I didn't know. Corrosion resistance. Silver, unlike many metals, doesn't readily corrode or rust, even when exposed to harsh vacuum and intense space radiation, whatever space radiation is. I guess that's out for satellites and spaceships and stuff like that. 
This durability keeps sensitive equipment operational and extends the lifespan of spacecraft components. And when I grew up, a lot of my friends' dads worked for McDonnell Douglas, and they worked on like the Apollo missions, I think it was. It was really cool. Um, anyway, reflective properties. We know that. Highest reflective property. We knew that already, but thank you, John, for reminding us, right? Um, but solderability. Uh, I didn't know this. Actually, there's three things. It readily forms strong solder joints, essential for high precision electronics and wiring. Ductability and malleability. That means it can be like shaped and and um, uh, and, and thinned out very, very. But th this is the other one I didn't know. Lubrication. Who knew? Thank you, John Little. Right? Lubrication. It's low friction coefficient in in specific applications makes it valuable for reducing wear and tear in moving parts. Right. And that can be a big thing. That can be a big, big, big thing. And let's get back. Let's I want to say hi to my uh, my basement dweller. Sorry, I left you there, guys. Hopefully you saw that the whole time. Good morning, Craig. Rise and shine. Craig Edmonds joining us from the West Coast, a West Coast basement dweller. Thank you, Craig, for being here. Think about this. Think about this. OK, I was listening to Jeff Clark. He's one of the most respected analysts in the in the silver and gold sector. He was talking with Daniela Camboni, who I think now is with ITM Trading. Mining supply. Just take a deep breath. Let's get back to the basics. We got a big war going on between Keynesian economics and Austrian economics. We have all these symptoms, money printing, blah, blah, blah. But then let's focus in on silver. Take another deep breath. Take a big, deep silver breath. Okay. Jeff Clark. I think he summed it up beautifully here. Beautifully. Mining supply in a major downtrend. Total supply of silver in the world. That includes the supply above the ground in a major downtrend. And he said something that knocked my socks off. Okay. I got socks flying around this house all the time. Okay. So mining supply, major downtrend. Total supply, major downtrend. Demand increasing. We just talked about you can use silver for lubrication. <laughs> No dirty mind thoughts when I say that there are basement dwellers, okay? We are pristine when we get together here in the basement. You can use silver for, what else was it? I forget. I got to remember. I'll review. Anyway, okay, the demand is increasing. But this is the part that knocked my socks off. When we talk about the mining supply downtrend, the total supply downtrend, Jeff Clark said in the last four years, the cumulative death deficit, when you aggregate it, I think that's appropriate to say, all together is almost 600 million ounces, okay? That's a lot of silver, guys. The whole mining sector only makes a little over 800 million in a year, okay? All of this, as the, as the national debt goes up a trillion dollars every 100 days, the dollar is being devalued. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna cover something critical for you to understand. Especially a lot of you longtime basement dwellers probably realize this uh, or know this because we've covered it. But it, it, it warrants a review. It's so critical for you to understand this, and the new people need to understand this as well. The dollar is being devalued. Look, one easy way to look at it is since President Nixon temporarily took us off the gold standard. I was one year old. I didn't have my train wreck book yet. I got that when I was about 10. Nonetheless, he temporarily took us off the gold standard ever since then in 1971. Do you know how much, do you know how much the dollar has lost in value when you compare it to gold? 98%, right? The dollar's lost 98% of its value. That's thievery. That's robbery. I won't go down that path, but there really is, okay? Okay? So when we talk about the dollar continuing to lose value, because I won't pull up the debt clock again. You can do it for yourself, right? We've got we've got debt and deficit out of control. We're talking about the dollar losing real value. There's a massive difference. This is what is critical to understand. A massive difference between the dollar losing real value in the dollar losing or gaining relative value. Real value means compared to gold, 
Our, uh, yeah, the dollar's lost 98% of its value in the last, what, 45 years, compared to a loaf of bread, compared to a barrel of oil, compared to anything, right? The dollar has lost real value. The relative value is what they want to trick you with. They're trying to trick you every day, right? They tell, oh, the mainstream media, the dollar's up, the DX, the dollar index is at 104, the dollar index is at 106. That's relative value. That's comparing the dollar to the euro primarily and the Japanese yen, which are both crud ball currencies. So don't get confused when you're looking at your silver and your gold and your 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 number one, you should be looking at it in terms of ounces that you own. But if you do want to compare it to unicorn fart dust or paper money, whether it's the yen, the yen's unicorn fart dust, the euro's unicorn fart dust, right? The boulevard's unicorn fart dust, the Turkish, I forget what they call it, lira? No, anyway, they're all unicorns. They're all fiat, money, paper, make-believe, right? You want to compare the real value, the real value. When you do that, you get a warm, fuzzy feeling, okay? Um Yep, that's it, guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the super chats. I'll be back on tomorrow. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I almost made a big mistake. I want you to do something, a little favor for Ronnie from Ron's Basement, okay? And I put a link to this in the description. Oh, I got to hit the gong. Yes, I'm going to hit the gong. And then, well, I'm, I'm going to hit the gong after I ask you this favor, okay? I put a link in the description of this video for gold trivia. Okay, my friend, and he's going to come on. We got, we're going to have a special guest. He's agreed to come on. My friend Sam, he's the dad of my one of my daughter's friends. He was born in India. Okay, I don't know. I think he spent his first eight years in India. His mom and dad's. I've met his parents, his family. Anyway, he's going to come on the show at some point and talk to us about what gold and silver are really like in India. And this guy's very successful. His wife. Uh, Padmini, also very successful people, wonderful people, smart people. He's going to come down here and provide us with a unique insight into how gold and silver, what what, what it means in India. Because we know they have 25,000 metric tons of gold in India. Do you know that? 25,000 in their houses, like Indian citizens own. That's like three times what uh, what we have in Fort Knox anyway. They love silver. They imported 300 million ounces of silver. Anyway, he put together, he has a trivia channel that he started and he made a gold trivia. There's a, there's a, there's a short, there's a link to it. You can go test your skills. The link is in the description. Do that. Let's ring the gong. Hey, this is for you guys. This is for you. Okay. This is for the basement dwellers. We got the 300 thumbs up. Let's ring the gong. Susie's at a basketball game with the girls, so she can't give me updates. I'm doing this completely solo. I think I'm live. I don't even know if I'm live. Did I forget to hit go live? Oh, shoot. Are you guys there? Huh? Oh, gong time. All right, Jake. Thank you. Now, I want you to think a good, happy thought. Silver, $100 as I ring the gong for the final time. (laughs) And listen to how it resonates after I hit it. Here you go. This one's for you. All right, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Craig, for the super chat. You guys are the best. I'll be back on tomorrow with Ted. We're going to zoom in on silver, our favorite subject. We got a lot to talk about tomorrow. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.